Uh, Thanks so much, Daryl. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending today. I'm Liz Alterman, and um, I'm a freelance writer, and one of my specialties is in the area of uh, career advice and career development. So I look forward to speaking with you today about important but painful things to do after losing your job. And I'll be speaking to you based on my own experience, but also in, I'll be including tips and strategies that I've collected from experts while I've been writing for The Muse, which is an online career and advice site. So just to give you a little background about me, um, when I lost my job in 2014, I wasn't really surprised. Unfortunately, I'd survived multiple rounds, I'm sorry, rounds of layoffs in the months prior, so I wasn't completely shocked. But even though I knew that losing my job was a real possibility, that didn't make it any easier when I was told during a group conference call that my position had been eliminated. So I'd worked really hard for the company for maybe about three years, and I was good at my job. And so obviously I felt upset, insulted, and confused. And in the days that followed, um, I found myself really missing the work that I'd done there, as well as my colleagues, and probably most importantly, my paycheck. So it took me several weeks to process that it was really over. And after sending out dozens of resumes and going on a ton of interviews, I was fortunate to find another job just six months later. Um, but fast forward to 2017, and I was laid off again when that company restructured and cut costs. So again, I wasn't completely caught off guard, and yet there I was in a complete state of shock again. So because I'd been through it before, I was better prepared to cope and move on from this second layoff. And so what I'm gonna share with you today are some of the tips and strategies that I've picked up having been laid off twice and having to kind of pick up and get back out there. So as Daryl mentioned, if you have any questions as we go along, in this presentation, please feel free to write them in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. So I thought, I, you know, I've briefly touched on the emotional component to losing your job and being unemployed, but I think because it can cause so much emotional and mental stress, I think it's important to first focus on those components. Um, whether you saw your job loss coming or you were completely blindsided, it's really natural, um, I think, to feel shocked and upset following a job loss. I know for me, there was a period where I'd wake up almost every day and my first thought would be, wow, did that really happen? Um, even if you didn't necessarily love your job, it could take weeks, months um, to process this life event. But unfortunately, in most of our cases, unless you have a hefty savings account or a winning lottery ticket, you don't really have the luxury of wallowing or indulging in self-pity. So that means you have to really get back out there and um, get out of bed each day, put one foot in front of the other and figure out your next move, no matter how difficult it might feel in the moment. So as this slide suggests, I think one of the most important things you can do first is acknowledge your emotions um, because they're valid. And I think, you know, especially talking to people who've been through this, it's sort of a universal thing that, you know, you, you really, your self-esteem takes a hit. So give yourself a grace period to acknowledge that and then move on because holding on to those emotions really won't serve you well as you begin your search in earnest. So if you've given yourself some time to process that, this um, life event, and you're not really feeling any better and you can't seem to harness the strength to really enter the job search fray, don't worry, um, you're not alone. There are a lot of people who are struggling to get back on track, and they can often, you can find support by joining a group of job seekers or talking to a professional like a headhunter or a career coach who can provide encouragement and insight into opportunities in your field. So I found that talking with others who were either in the same position that I was or who had been in that position, um, it really helps kind of keep those negative emotions in check. It feels a little bit less personal, and you realize that, you know, it, maybe it, it had nothing to do with you or any shortcoming on your part. And um, so I felt that sort of reaching out for help when you feel like you're just not getting anywhere can help you make progress and at least keep those emotions in check as you move on. Um, I also found it helpful to read inspiring stories of other people who've um, you know, been in the path of unemployment 
um, and have had to pick themselves up, either reinvent themselves or get back out there at midlife. I know um, I was, I am in my 40s and I've been in my 40s for both of those um, layoffs. So it's, it's not easy to, you know, maybe step into an interview and find someone half your age <laughs> looking at you on the other side wondering, um, you know, are they going to see any value in me? So I think for me, there were days when I definitely needed some encouragement to psych myself up for the job hunt. And I often found that by reading success stories of how other job seekers ended up back at work. Um, if you find yourself procrastinating, one thing I'd avoid is social media. I found that this could really be a rabbit hole that left me feeling worse about my situation. I know um, oftentimes I would feel envious of other people who had successful careers, who were getting promotions or out there traveling the world and sort of doing all the things that I, I wanted to do or felt that I should have been doing by now if it weren't for my career setbacks. So if you feel weighed down by these feelings, I would recommend staying off social media and really channeling your energy into your job search, almost like putting blinders on to the rest of the world while you kind of hunker down and, um, and figure out your next move. I think that if you can recognize that you're going to put in the time and the effort, um, it will pay off for you in the long run. So another um, thing that I've found to be important but also difficult is talking about your situation and really networking. Uh, initially, after each of my layoffs, I felt almost embarrassed about my situation. And so many times I'd run into someone and the question, so how's work? Uh, would come up, and it often felt like a punch in the gut. It just, it felt very personal, and oh gosh, now I have to talk about this again. But as much as I hated um, really going back and retelling the story of being laid off, I found that when I did, I was surprised by how many friends and even people I had just met were very quick to offer their assistance. Uh, from headhunter contact information to volunteering to share my resume with HR departments, everyone really seemed willing to go above and beyond to, to help me out. And I was really grateful knowing that I had that support. And I think even though this is a challenge to talk about sometimes, um, you never know who's connected to someone else or who just heard about an opening that would be perfect for your skill set. So it's definitely worth opening up and sort of suffering the mild embarrassment that comes with sharing your story. Uh, because ultimately, people can't help you if they don't know that you need it. So I would say don't be shy, even if it's not really in your nature, if um, you're more of an introvert. I think this is one area where it's important to sort of push yourself outside your comfort zone, um, and it can really pay dividends. Uh, one other thing that sort of made me feel better, and I hate to rely on a misery loves company standpoint, but... I found that once I began sharing my story about my layoff with people, many shared their own story of losing their jobs with me. And I think a lot of people were inclined to help me because they had been there before or they had grown up in a household where a parent had lost a job. And um, so they had lived it and it made them a lot more empathetic and also a lot more motivated to help. And at the same time, it made me feel less alone. And so I, I can't recommend this highly enough. But at the same time, when you're talking about yourself and your circumstances, it can make you uncomfortable and you really think, oh, how do I start this or how do I sell myself? And so what I would say is really take your time to craft an elevator pitch. Plan what you're going to say that so people can figure out how best to help you. Um, what I mean by this is really get specific. So you want to share your strengths and what your talents are. And if you can explain how you've used these to better a company's bottom line or streamline processes, that's actionable information that your people within your network can sort of take away. And once you give them concrete information that offers your friends or acquaintances insight into exactly what you can do, uh, that'll really give them a way to, to figure out how to put your resume in the right hands. So once you've crafted this elevator pitch, what I would suggest is practicing it as many times as it takes so that you feel comfortable. And I guess what I mean by this is try to keep it succinct and interesting. You don't have to, you know, start with your first job when you were in high school, or, but really just highlight your talents and um, where you were able to make a difference. 
So also what I would say is when you're talking about your situation, focus also on what you'd like to do next. And um, as much as I know for a while I was very angry with the first company that let me go because I felt um, I was let go in a round of about 200 people. And I, it was a startup and I felt like we were really building something great. And um, so as much as I had that sort of those negative feelings toward that employer and you'd, I'd always have to bring up exactly what I did in that role to sort of prove that I was qualified for the next role it's important to sort of table any negative feelings that you have and make sure that's not part of your narrative. Just really stay positive and focus on what you can do and why you would be an asset to your next employer. Um, so unfortunately, here's another painful thing that's important to do while you're out of work and looking for your next role. Um, create a budget. So, what I would say is that we're all familiar with the uh, phrase, knowledge is power, and this is a time where, um, you know, ignorance is not bliss. With less money coming in, you'll want to know where every dollar is going. Um, so what you'll want to do is record your expenses, uh, set some goals, and really create a budget that it can serve as a living document where, let's say, something happens where you need to make adjustments, um, you can go back, make it more realistic, or um, you know, cut your spending, figure out where exactly everything is going. Because the last thing you want to do is really add on to any debt or take on um, new debt while you don't have much coming in. So for me, I really tried to figure out where I could cut corners, not knowing how long I would be out of work. So, um, you know, a lot of times we hear about the latte factor or we're told, you know, skip the takeout. And um, I also found that during this period, I did a lot of, um, you know, eliminating of things that were not necessary to purchase or, you know, sort of going to, um, you know, staying home instead of going out. And I found that it almost motivated me to really work harder on that job search, just thinking about all sort of the luxury items that I took for granted that I felt like I could no longer really justify spending on. So, um, you know, I, I think it also made me feel like at least I wasn't making a bad situation worse. If you can look at it like that, it, it can make it a little bit easier to get through it. Um, and I know this part might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but sometimes you have to almost spend money to make money. And what I mean by this is that if you need a little personal development, this is one time where I would say, um, you know, channel your energy and also your dollars into making yourself more marketable. Um, so if that means enrolling in a class or two, um, doing something that'll get you into a new position more quickly, or, you know, sort of gives you an edge when it comes to your competition, I would recommend doing that. Um, in my freelance work now, I also write in the education space. And so I write a lot about certification programs and additional degrees that can be earned in either a few months or online, making it easier for adult learners to go back to school so that um, we can sort of stay competitive with, with the younger folks who are coming out now. And um, so another area I'd say is that while you're working on improving your professional self, if you feel like you could use a boost either physically or mentally, it's worth spending that money on a gym membership, maybe a personal trainer or a therapist because feeling good in both your body and your mind will help keep you strong and healthy at a time when you really need to be. I know um, for me, I lost my job in, it was January, and I live on the East Coast, and it was freezing, and I was home a lot, and just the isolation of not really having any coworkers to talk to, being indoors all day, you know, wondering if my resumes were going into an abyss, was anyone reading them, um, you know, would I, I kept checking my email, would, would a recruiter, would a headhunter, would a hiring manager email me back, um, it can really mess with your mind, and so, I did, I joined my local YMCA and I would walk on the treadmill for an hour a day and um, to me it seemed like money well spent because I was sort of investing in my mental health at a time when um, I felt that that was really important uh, to try to stay positive. So similarly, if you've been job hunting and it's not going as well as you'd hoped, it's important to figure out where you need a little support. So maybe your resume isn't as tight or polished as it could be. 
Uh, maybe your interviewing skills need a little bit of sharpening. So this is another area where I would say it, it's worth the investment in yourself. Um, sort of think of this cost if you decide to, let's say, go see a professional resume writer or, or hire a career coach or a life coach. Um, think of that as an investment on your future success. So, um, but before you necessarily pay for those, what I would suggest is looking around in your own neighborhood or again reaching out within your network and seeing if you can um, find anything through your library or community center um, or even just a support group where they will bring in an expert who can help you maybe um, tighten up that resume, polish up a cover letter, um, do mock interviews before you go out just to make sure that everything is as exceptional as it can be, so that when you go, you feel confident knowing that you're in the best position possible to get that job. Okay, so now let's say you've gotten, you've done all, everything and you've gotten that interview and you're about to walk in and you know that they're going to probably ask you about your last employer. And um, this definitely can be daunting to address either a resume gap, to talk about especially was an unpleasant situation when you left your last role. Um, it can feel like a hurdle, but don't be afraid to address it. You know, still staying positive, but with the recent economic downturn and more people leaving their jobs to take care of either children or aging parents, resume gaps are a lot more common than most of us realize. So chances are yours will not be shocking to a hiring manager, even though, and I think in our heads, it tends to be overwhelming or how am I gonna explain this? It's not uncommon. So what I would suggest is, you know, obviously you wanna stay honest, but, um, you know, just sort of address it briefly. I know for me, I, um, I would say, you know, my employer restructured or they cut cost or uh, especially the, my second layoff, they were um, cutting costs a lot because they were trying to attract an investor and so they needed to shave off expenses. And um, so when you go out on an interview, I think address it, be honest, but then also focus on how your skill set will easily transfer and explain also why you're excited about this new opportunity. So if you can tell that story to the best of your ability and really minimize, um, you know, sort of cover why you have this gap in your resume, but then move past it skillfully. I think that um, that shows a lot of grace in an interview. And I think that usually should get you over that hurdle and on to the next part of your story, which is focusing on your talents and skills and what you can do for that employer. Okay, so now that you've done all of that, I just wanna um, close by saying it's, it's completely natural that after a layoff, you want to maybe just retreat and not think about re-entering the work world for a while. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, unless you have a trust fund or um, you know bars of gold that are reproducing in your basement, you really don't have much choice but to get back out there into the career arena. So I think you know, take some time, acknowledge your emotions, and then um, look forward to a brighter future for yourself. And um, I've listed a few resources here that I thought could be helpful and that have been helpful to me in the job search. Um, whether it's using technology, I know keywords can trip a lot of people up, or um, you know, some people who networking might not come naturally to you, it's good to have some ideas on that. And then also um, ways to stay mentally strong through your job search. And then these are just um, some websites that I find helpful. The Muse is one um, where I write and they offer career advice and I think they also have some online courses and um, the others are good as well. Tips for um, really how to shine in an interview, how to fix up your resume, um, others, other, I guess, things you can find there are stories of people who've been in the same situation where they're out there looking for work. And um, the last one is my own personal website where I sort of chronicled my job loss and I tried to approach it with humor and I hope grace and uh, 
I, hope, I know I have had um, different people reach out to me who've read it who've said, you know, they can relate to all the same emotions. And again, I feel like whether, you know, you're the CEO or you are entry level, when you lose your job, the emotions are universal. And so there's, um, I hope, a lot to relate to. But I just would like to thank Daryl for having me today. And I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Uh, yep. Uh, those in attendance, you're welcome to submit your questions in the chat pod. Um, right now, there are none, but I actually have one question for you. Oh, sure, Dal. Yeah. Um, you uh, you had mentioned that you it earlier that uh, you. Uh, found comfort in in talking with others who might who might be in the same situation you are it, do you have any tips on how you located those people who might have been unemployed or anything like that um you know what i looked around i sort of just googled um support groups and i was surprised i guess um i was able to find a few in my area some were affiliated with religious organizations either churches or temples would have them you didn't you didn't of course have to be affiliated with those but they would hold them sort of in basements or i also know um, my love my public library does a lot for job seekers and um either bringing in experts or they would have um especially for people who maybe aren't up to date on the latest technology, they would have, you know, free seminars on how to use, um, set up a LinkedIn profile or things like that. So I would say just if you can either, um, you know, use your own computer to search in your support groups in your area for unemployment or um, the library. I would also, if you have a headhunter in your area, I would give them a call and see if they have any recommendations on where to find other people who are going through the same thing. Okay, that's great. Uh, I have some questions that just came in. I'm going to see if I can read them to you. Uh, it says, um, how might you explain that you choose to lead a company because constant changes in leadership began to lead to very bad management? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what he meant by that. If you could sort of um, elaborate on that a little bit more, um, the person who sent that particular question in. Uh, I, I I guess what I'm taking from it is that, you know, how can you almost um, minimize, you know, so you're not really throwing your employer under the bus, but still, you know, still fully explaining why you've left. Um, that is a tough one because I know I, I have been in positions where you, you sort of see things going sideways instead of moving forward. Um, I guess I would try to focus on, um, you know, maybe saying that you wanted to take your your skill set in a different direction, so that you're looking for new growth opportunities that perhaps you didn't see available in your current situation. Um, that that's a question that I would probably reach out um, either to a career coach or maybe. Um, check a library for books or even just, I think, a Google search on that. You know, I don't know if um, whoever submitted that question, I would look at Forbes. There's um, a columnist there, Liz Ryan, who answers a lot of questions that are similar to that. And um, she does an excellent job helping people navigate those sort of tricky situations. All right, cool. And she just followed up. She said, we have, we've had a lot of uh, leadership turnover. The situations become, became so poor that a number of us decided to leave rather than wait until we had new opportunities. One manager even stated that we had to do what, we, what he said. He stated that he could take our lunch away from us and we could do nothing about it. Oh, yeah, yeah that definitely seems like a toxic situation. <laughs> certainly hard to talk about in an interview that yeah. is right yeah. I would probably say um, you know it might sound like a euphemism but I would probably say that you know I left the position because um, I, I was looking for growth opportunities or a chance to really use the skills that I have or my skills are being underutilized in my current role um, or maybe if you're going if this person is going for something similar maybe talk about, um, let's say, an idea that they had that they weren't really able to bring to fruition that they would like to try to, you know, explore in the future. Um, I guess just sort of focus on uh, the opportunity of landing somewhere new as opposed to 
the lack of opportunity at the past position, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. This is uh, slightly different from the title. Do you think that in a in a job that you're unhappy, is it still better to have a job before you leave a job? You know, I have to say from the experts that I speak with, that definitely does seem to be the consensus. And um, I don't know why that is, but I also feel anecdotally at times when I have had a job and been looking around, it seems uh, that I get calls or uh, emails much more quickly when I'm current, currently employed as opposed to when I'm out of work. So I know it's very hard to say stay in a situation where you're unhappy, but it does that does seem to be the consensus that it's best to to stay in a job and keep looking rather than leave and then have nothing. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, people start sending questions. Uh, there was another question. Uh, I think he's saying, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, do you recommend any social media? I believe you mentioned Facebook but didn't mention other sites. Do you recommend LinkedIn Premium? Yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, I use LinkedIn. I don't, I don't use Premium, but I do know um, people who do who enjoy it. Um, I, I definitely have had uh, people reach out to me via LinkedIn. In my role, I get a lot of people who ask me to write for free. <laughs> so, um, and, and that's totally, you know, sometimes I, I do it for uh, the experience or to build up a portfolio in a, in a certain area where I might not have it. So I would say I do use LinkedIn, but I would be cautious just to make sure um, if someone reaches out to you about your expertise, just make sure um, that they are legitimate. But I think I have had good luck. I know LinkedIn makes it very easy now to apply for things. Um, you know, there's almost like a one-touch application there once you've got all of your information uploaded. So I would definitely recommend it. I think when I talk about social media, I think a lot of times um, it can be hard when you're job searching um, and you see people, you know, celebrating a work anniversary or things like that. It can almost be bad for morale. But I would definitely recommend um, LinkedIn. I've also used Indeed. Dot com um, and I like all the filters on there where you can sort of put in your location your parameters and um, then sometimes they'll also send you email updates as LinkedIn will do also once you begin searching enough they'll sort of I guess they figure out the what you're looking for and they begin sending you emails so I always like that just it makes you feel like more opportunities are out there than you might know about on your own cool um, another uh... Actually, last question. Uh, someone wanted us to wanted you to confirm which was your website. Oh, mine is at the bottom on the balls of our assets. That's okay. uh, my personal one. Where I, um, I guess I started it back in um, 2014 after I lost my job. Um, just as a side note, which sort of made my own situation a bit worse. My husband had lost his job six weeks earlier, <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I, I sort of started. Um, the blog as almost a diary of how can this be happening to us. And um, so I sort of chronicled, um, we both, we took different approaches to our job search. And um, so that you can read all about that there, but <laughs> I <laughs> say two people out of work, don't try this at home. <laughs> uh, and uh, let me see, um, uh, just a last follow-up from the original question. She says, uh, I'm just concerned that it might be stigmatizing that I just left without finding another position elsewhere first. Um, going, going back to the first question, the original question we were talking about. Right. Um, I guess this is what I would say if if you have this sort of in your arsenal, if you're currently doing any volunteer work or if you are even caring for children, caring for an aging parent, um, I have a good friend who is a human resource um, director at a pharmaceutical firm. And when I speak with her, she will say, you would really be amazed at how many people come in and say, I just had to take a mental health break. I took a sabbatical. I traveled the world. Or I decided um, I wanted to take a break and give back. And so I spent a year volunteering. Or um, So I think to us, when we're in that situation, it seems very hard um, or very daunting to talk about why you would leave a job without another job. But I think to a hiring manager, it's not as uncommon as we think. 
So if there's anything in your life that is really positive that you can play up, um, such as volunteering, even if, if you're leading anything in, within your community, um, any organizations that would lend itself to either leadership or organization or planning, anything that you can point to to sort of minimize, I left this job without another, and shine a spotlight on, but look what I'm doing now, um, I would try to skew it that way, if that's helpful at all. All right, well, cool. Uh, are there any more questions? Going once. Well, while we're waiting to see if any more questions come in, Liz, I want to thank you very much from uh, IEEE USA for uh, giving this presentation for us. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was great, and I hope uh, everyone enjoyed enjoyed it. Uh, there are, there are no other questions that have come in, so we're going to go ahead and end it. And I if I'll give you the floor if you want to say any last words for us. Um, I would just like to say thank you for having me, and I think um, for everyone listening, I wish you all the best in your job search. I know. You personally how challenging it can be as I said from um, an emotional standpoint and a mental and also a fiscal standpoint it, it's um, certainly a scary time and um, I I just would say I wish everyone the best all right well, cool. well thank you so much and uh, I'm going to end the webinar right now we have recorded this webinar so we will be putting it up on our IEEE USA website for uh, watching on demand uh, probably early next week um, and uh, people are writing and saying thank you so much. Thank you so much for your advice, and we appreciate it so much. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank All you. Right. Have All a right. good well, afternoon. You too. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. See you later, everyone.